low tide strategy at one of my favorite spots right now. Welcome back! If you're new to the channel, we cover kayak modifications, spin, and fly fishing. So poke that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. Now, let's get on with it. Well, I'm going to take you to one of my favorite fishing spots today. First thing to do is get across the intercoastal, and then I'm going to negotiate my way back at low tide that will allow you to see why I picked the spot I did and why I followed the strategy. And maybe I'll even catch a fish. Who knows? It's low tide. Should be just deep enough for me to get almost up to where I want to be. I want to get there before the fish show up. And I think my strategy today will be to use some of the live bait I picked up. And I also want to try a new rig to see if that'll work with the gulp shrimp. You can kind of see how important it is to get out during low tide because you can really see where all the channels are. Up here, you can see the crab pots and those mark out where it is deepest. Now, you can also use the crab pots that are exposed, like that one way over there, to assess how deep the water is. And I kind of know that the crab pot's got to be about half submerged before I can get my kayak through. So I anticipate having to get out and pull the kayak here in a little bit, but the extra exertion will be worth it to get there to the ambush point before the fish do. So you can see I'm trying to follow along where the crab pots are right now. This pot where this marker is is totally submerged. So I know the channel's pretty good right here. In fact, I just ran over the pot and we back up. And where I want to go is way over there. And you can see that it's still dry from the low tide. So I'm going to follow a channel I know about and loop around and come in from the right. I've done the long loop around on this channel. Now I'm heading for my spot. And it looks like I'm going to be there at just about the right time. I can see the sandbar up there. Don't know if you can see it with the resolution of this GoPro. But I'll get on the other side of that and up there at the choke point. And that's where I'm going to set up my ambush. Okay, I'm in the shallow spot. Now i got to walk to get back in. This is where a stand-up assist rope is really handy because it doubles as a pull rope. So you can see why I like this spot. These oyster beds on the left and then the high marsh on the right creates a highway that the fish have to run down to get farther back here in the marsh. Now this is the first time I've been here this year. Last year there was a cutover uh, to the left and that's where I want to set up. That way I can fish both sides depending on which way the reds decide to run. Whoa, it's different out here. The cutover is basically gone. This has changed. This is why you've got to refresh your recon every single year. Interesting. But I think this is going to be a good spot here because they've got to come through right there. So as you can see, here's where I am. Here's the channel. There's the choke point over here to my left. And the big development this year is that the sand and mud has washed out between all these oyster beds. There used to be a way for the fish to come this way, but no longer. So I'm gonna sit here behind this hump and fish this spot right over in here because it's the only way they can go. Even when the water gets up to high tide, I don't. when you look at the marks on the marsh grass over there, I don't think it's going to get up high enough to where they're going to come this way. So what they could do is come down that channel, hang a left here, and then come out into my kill zone. So I'm going to get set up. They should be here in maybe 30 minutes. So I'm going to deploy my fish call right here at the edge because this channel is so narrow that I don't want the catches to be tangled up in the line. So I'll throw it out right over here. Got to take something, not very big, probably just a big croaker. 
check out the fiddler crabs in between these oysters. This is why the redfish come up and hit the oyster beds. Fiddlers all over the place. I don't know if the camera is going to pick it up, but I'm fishing the right hand side of the channel here because that's where all the bait fish are running up. Unfortunately, at this time of the year, it's mostly little croakers and pinfish, but the reds will be chasing those things. So I'm fishing basically right in through there, hoping to get up with a red. See, there might be some red action right in there. See where everybody's getting stirred up? I've got a... They're all right around my, my fish call. Now, this is getting a little bit frustrating. Water's about halfway up the oyster beds. These reds should be here by now. Sure there's a lot of bait moving in. They ought to be following the bait. Well, we normally hang out here till the water covers the bed, so I've probably got another hour to go fishing this channel. Got something here. Nice fish. I'm going to let him go. Yeah. Just catching this little stuff today. Slow fishing, but the spot's still good. We've been back there since and the reds are now running. But at least you got to see uh, some of the logic I apply as I decide how to fish a channel. If you've got suggestions on how I can improve my technique, boy, I'd sure appreciate it. Throw them in the comments below. Thanks.